Hey guys, it's Jake from Living Healthy Every Day. Last night I had the craziest nightmare ever. So I was in a bathtub with this beautiful girl. Kind of a weird thing like all uh, dreams are and all nightmares can get. And then out of nowhere it got really dark and there was a silhouette of this evil looking devil like creature standing outside of the bathtub. And the only way I could get out, cause I was cornered in, you know, bathtubs, you're kind of cornered in, was to make a deal with the devil. So my deal with him was, <laughs> at first I didn't want to make a deal, but my deal with him was to have extraordinary health. And I didn't know what the consequences were. Uh, I shook his hand and I could not wake up. I just couldn't wake up. I was trying to force myself to wake up. And when I finally was able to wake up, I was kind of in a sleep paralysis where I, I was looking, I could see the ceiling of my room, see things. My bathroom door was open, which I leave open, but kind of freaked me out. And when I finally woke up, I realized that a lot of my nightmares have happened when I've been lying supine. So when I've been lying on my back and there's been a lot of speculation as to why this happens. Apparently your body gets into deeper sleep when you're lying on your back. And so people who uh, lie on their back tend to have nightmares more often. And I, I kind of looked into the reason of this, why this happened with neurotransmitter wise. And this past weekend I've been kind of sluggish, like mentally fatigued and tired, somewhat depressed, not entirely overjoyed or anything like that. And I've come to the realization that fuck acetylcholine. I, I don't curse often, but screw acetylcholine, it flippin' sucks. And what I mean by that is every time I've taken something that enhances the acetylcholine in my brain, which acetylcholine helps with working memory and uh, muscle movement and things like that, every time I've enhanced it in my brain with royal jelly or astragalus, anything like that, I've noticed, even with paracetam, I've noticed a sense of lethargy. I, I kind of want to go into, I, I've got this list here of symptoms you can feel with too much acetylcholine in your brain. I'm just going to read off it right now. Uh, some of them people have reported subdued or depressed mood, uh, difficulty concentrating, difficulty with higher order or complex thought processes, mental fatigue, uh, mental confusion, memory problems, decreased motivation, feeling overly sleepy or tired, Understanding uh, or difficulty understanding or performing tasks, pessimistic, negative ideation, uh, feelings of helplessness or hopelessness, fretful, so kind of like depressed, essentially dep uh, depression, irritability or anger, emotional heightening or uh, sadness and tearfulness, blurred vision, headache, dry mouth, altered sense of smell, stomach pain, intestinal gas, diarrhea, nausea, muscle pain, joint pain tooth or jaw pain, tingling or numbness in the arms, muscle weakness, increased urinary frequency, cold or flu-like symptoms, weakening of the immune system, cough, nasal discharge, chills, cold feet, sleep disturbance, what I was having, uh, introversion, anxiety. Now this is a big shocker. More and vivid dreaming and higher incidence of nightmares. So that relates back to the crazy dream I just had, uh, nightmare, and not being able to wake up from it. So that's, that's a, a symptom of too much acetylcholine. And I was on astragalus, which helps increase uh, acetylcholine. And I, I, I just, just want to share with you some more things that will increase the function of uh, acetylcholine. And I'm messing up some of these names because these are words that I, I don't really know how to pronounce. I, I read them, but I don't ever speak them aloud. Uh, so centrophenyl... Exine stimulates the release of acetylcholine within the brain. GHB stimulates the release of acetylcholine within the brain. Miraprene enhances the function of acetylcholine within the brain. Uh, Nemophidine increases acetylcholine in the hippocampus of the brain, so the, the memory, the, the short-term memory of the brain. Prastam increases the number of collagenic receptors of acetyl, for acetylcholine within the brain by 30 to 40 percent. So when I took acetyl, uh, when I took paracetam a couple of years ago, I was so lethargic and everyone was like, I have working memory and I was the only one who had the complete opposite symptoms. So I had too much acetylcholine. So that means I did not need to take choline with it. Um, 
Primaracetam increases the number of collagenic receptors for acetylcholine within the brain. Uh, Alcar facilitates the synthesis and release of acetylcholine and also mimics the function of acetylcholine. So I've noticed every time I take Alcar, I feel great for a couple days and then after that I start feeling depressed and that's probably why. Phosphatidylserine stimulates the release of acetylcholine within the cerebral cortex. DMAE raises acetylcholine uh, within the brain. Uh, it, <clears throat> it also inhibits the metabolism for, of choline in uh, peripheral tissues, which is pretty interesting. Um, vitamin B1 facilitates the synthesis of it. B5 is an essential catalyst for the conversion of choline into uh, DMA for, or phosphatidylserine for acetylcholine. Uh, B12 facilitates the production of acetylcholine. Now here's one that affected me. Astragalus enhances the function of acetylcholine. Ginkgo biloba increases the responsiveness to and receptor, number of receptors of acetylcholine in the brain. Ginsengs enhance the body's utilization of acetylcholine, and I'm not sure if that's bad. Maybe it will get rid of it faster. Lecithin enhances the production of acetylcholine. Uh, now, something that I, I've taken a, while, a lot is rhodiola rosa, and this is interesting. I found out that rhodiola rosa causes acetylcholine esterase inhibition, so the breakdown of acetylcholine is slowed down with rhodiola. It, it, rhodiola acts as a MAOI uh, for a lot of um, a lot of neurotransmitters. Uh, so here are some ways that you can lower it, lower acetylcholine, so you don't get this depression. If you have problems with acetylcholine, I know some people who do awesomely with acetylcholine, with like phosphatidylserine and things like that. I do horribly. If you're like me, here are some ways to lower it. So uh, some anti-Parkinson's drugs, which are not natural. Um, I'll put them in the, the description below because I don't know how to pronounce these words. Um, Benadryl will also antagonize uh, the acetylcholine receptors, so it won't attach. Uh, but that can also make you drowsy and sleepy, so I don't know if you want to go with that. And uh, anti antihistamines over a long period of time can give you a histamine problem. This only blocks uh, histamine receptor 1 and 2. So let's not get into that. Uh, racetams can reduce acetylcholine uh, to some degree uh, by using it up faster, but that's just theory. I don't know if I believe that. For me, paracetam messed me up. Uh, Anaracetam doesn't do too well with me. Um, Forescolin increases uh, acetylcholine um, esterase, so it will, it will break it down faster. And then uh, nootropics, if you want to enhance your brain, I know acetylcholine is meant for memory and, and for better functioning of your brain, but if, if that acetylcholine doesn't work for you and you want to enhance your brain, here are some nootropics you can use to enhance your brain without messing uh, messing up your acetylcholine. So we got Bacopa, fish oil, uh, you can take a B-complex or a methylated B-complex if you've got a methylation problem. Uh, Vinpocetine, uh, pyrotinol, 1,3-dimethylamine, and sub, uh, sub, sulbutylamine. Now these are all things that when I, I read them, I don't say them out loud when I'm researching this kind of stuff, so I, I, I butcher these words when I say it to you. Uh, and uh, things like acetylcholine, I had to say a million times uh, before even this video to say it right. So that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you've been taking to get rid of acetylcholine or how acetylcholine works within your brain because I found out it's horrible for my brain. So today's my ninja day. I've got my headband on. And thanks guys for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more episodes. And stay beautiful.